Welcome back to Quiz Guides. If you're new here, Quiz Guides are short crash course style videos to help beginner, novice, and intermediate players learn more about different quizable topics. Today, I'm going to be talking about Impressionism part one. So the Impressionist period mostly took place in the late, 18th century, late 19th century, and uh, it emerged in around 1874 when the anonymous society of painters, sculptors, and engravers, uh, they exhibited together in Paris um, as a reaction to the official annual salon. Uh, which was judged by artists from the Academy des Beaux-Arts. So that's sort of like the uh, beginnings of Impressionism and sort of how it stemmed. And some key features of Impressionist work, uh, as I'll show you throughout this presentation, are emphasis on uh, paintings that, are that take place in natural settings. Uh, they use this term called en plein air, which uh, is common for to describe like these natural settings. Um, they also like to portray atmospheric effects of shifting light. And they... Uh, typically use large rapid brush strokes, uh, or they use brush strokes that are broken into separate dabs of bright color. So those are just some features that is common during the, um, during impre in Impressionist painting. Uh, so today's presentation, I'm going to focus on uh, three French Impressionists. You have uh, Claude Monet, you have Edouard Monet, and you have Edgar Degas. So first, I'm gonna talk about Claude Monet. So Claude Monet is uh, considered the founder of French Impressionist painting. And uh, the name of Impressionism was actually uh, given uh, like to the movement or to this period of art uh, based on one of Monet's paintings called Impression Sunrise. And uh, this painting shows like, uh, you know, it has a natural setting. There's like a body of water, there's some, si there's some ships and there's like a sun in the background. Um, and so this is uh, sort of the start of the, of, of the Impressionist movement. Um, like I mentioned earlier, uh, similar to the Impressionist movement itself, Monet was known for en plein air paintings uh, of different landscapes. And uh, he lived at Giverny, which you might hear a lot come up in Monet Tossips, this, this town of Giverny. And he had a Japanese garden and, in that town. And uh, some of the paintings that he created were about haystacks and water lilies. So Monet made a lot of uh, series of paintings just about the same thing, but just multiple different versions of it. So um, oftentimes they'll toss up rather than just one specific painting, uh, the entire series. So Haystacks was just a, a series of paintings. Water Lily is a series of paintings. So let's talk about Impression Sunrise. So this is a picture of Impression Sunrise um, and it is, uh, and it depicts the port of La Havre, which is a port in uh, Northern Spain, which was actually, and it was actually Monet's hometown. And uh, it was actually shown, this painting was shown at the exhibition of the Impressionists in 1874. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, it sort of gave rise to the Impressionist movement. Uh, some other clues about this painting. Uh, there was this critic named Louis Leroy. And uh, in his review of the exhibition, the exhibition of the Impressionists for the newspaper Le Charivari, he actually used Impressionism to describe this, this style of work. So. Uh, as you can tell based on that, uh, even in this critic's sort of uh, review of this painting, the impressionist word or th that term was pretty much originated from this painting. So Monet was like the founder um, of this movement is essentially what I'm trying to uh, describe to you here. Um, another clue was that this painting was actually stolen in 1985 from the Musée Marmottan Monet uh, by two people, uh, Philip Jamin and Yusuf Kimoun. And uh, eventually was recovered, and I was actually returned back to the museum uh, five years later and redisplayed uh, a year later in 1991. All right. So next, I want to talk a little bit about the uh, Water Lily series. So uh, the Water Lily series is consists of about 250 paintings, um, and they depict uh, Monet's flower garden in his home in Giverny. And what's interesting is that many of the works were actually painted when Monet suffered from cataracts. Uh, so here's a picture of one of the paintings. There's, like I mentioned, a lot of them. So this is just one of them. Uh, so it's not important necessarily to know each individual painting, but just to know what the uh, series enta uh, entailed and what it was all about. And it took place in Giverny. That's pretty important. Um, some other important works of Monet that might come up, uh, you have the poppy field, poppy field near Argentoy, uh, which you can see here, a picture of that. Um, you have the Haystack series, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, you have the Rouen Cathedral series, which is just a series of paintings of the Rouen Cathedral, which is a, uh, a cathedral nearby um, in the city of Rouen, which is uh, also, I, I believe, in northern France. And then you have the Houses of Parliament, which was a series, which is a, a bunch of paintings of the Parliament building in um, England. All right, so next I'm gonna talk a little bit about Edward Manet. 
So Manet is interesting because uh, he was he was sort of a transitionist. So he basically his style of art um, acted as a transition from realism to impressionism. So while the, although he wasn't directly the founder of impressionism, uh, oftentimes he's sort of like the bridge between uh, that previous period of art realism and the uh, period of art that was common during that late 19th century period. Um, and he also painted modern modern life scenes and uh, natural settings as well. Uh, he's also known for his social scenes. I'll, uh, I'll talk about a couple. And some important works that I'm going to talk about are Luncheon on the Grass, Olympia, and A Bar at the Folie Berger. Um, I'm not going to show the first two paintings as they contain some nude imagery. So if you'd like, if you're curious, you can go look it up um, as I talk about it, uh, these paintings, and give you some clues on that. That might be uh, helpful. So Luncheon on the Grass uh, depicts a uh, scantily nude female bather. Um, and excuse me, scantily dressed female bather, as well as a female nude on a picnic. Um, and there's two dressed men in the rural, rural setting. And it was actually originally titled Le Bain, which means the bath. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. Um, but then it was changed to the luncheon on the grass. Um, so as I mentioned, there's two women. Uh, there's one woman that's bathing in the stream, which is in the background of the painting. And uh, that woman starts to, uh, seems to appear like seems to float almost above the central figures, which are uh, the women who's um, staring at the, at the viewer, as well as the two men who are fully, fully dressed. Um, some other important things are that there's some items in painting. A lot of times um, in quizable toss-ups, you'll, you'll hear about these items that are located in the painting, different parts of the painting, in the corners, in the bottom, stuff like that, stuff that you don't normally see right away. So it's important to know some of those. So you have a, a pair of women's clothes, you have a basket of fruit, and you have a loaf of bread, which are all located um, uh, in front of the central figures, so uh, sort of at the bottom of the painting. All right, so next I want to talk about Olympia. So Olympia was um, actually first exhibited at the 1865 Paris Salon, and it shows a nude woman lying on the bed, and she's being brought flowers by a fully clothed servant. And uh, the figure of Olympia was actually modeled by Victorine Muron, which is a pretty famous person. Uh, this Victorine Muron uh, comes up quite often for many toss-ups. And uh, she actually also modeled for Luncheon on the Grass, the painting I was discussing earlier. Um, some other important features of this painting, it depicts green curtains uh, behind the woman who's um, holding the bouquet. There is a black cat on the very right side of the painting. And the central figure uh, wears a pink flower in her hair, and she's looking towards the viewer. That's also kind of common in uh, Manet's works, is the central figure is staring right at the viewer, which um, was sort of interesting at the time. Uh, it was considered a bit scandalous that a, uh, especially in, in the Lynchet on the Grass and Olympia, because there's two naked women, so it's a bit scandalous that they were looking right at the viewer at the time, but uh, that's sort of an interesting feature about his paintings. And um, a really important clue is that this painting was actually based on Titian's Venus of Urbino. Titian was a, was a pretty ancient artist. Um, and you can also check out the Venus of Urbino and sort of see the similarities uh, between his work and Manet's work. All right, the next painting I want to talk about is the bar at the Folie Berger. Um, now this painting I will show you, and uh, I have the list of clues here, but I'll talk about it more. I want to show you the painting as I talk about it. Um, so this was Manet's last major work, and it was actually, uh, shows basically takes place in the Paris's uh, Folie Berger nightclub. And uh, the central figure is standing in front of a mirror, which you can tell by like the reflection. But it's interesting because the mirror is not actually like right behind her, it's like at an angle. So this painting has always been kind of a mystery of where the mirror is, because it's kind of hard to tell based on where um, the, the lady is reflecting and where the guy is standing in the very far right. So it's kind of hard to tell, but uh, that's sort of been, you know, uh, debated for a long time is, uh, you know, how accurate the painting's perspective was. Um, but uh, another thing was that there was a 2000 photo, uh, in 2000, there was a photograph of a staged reconstruction by Malcolm Park uh, of this painting that reproduced Manny's perspective. So um, the woman at the bar is a real person and her name was Suzanne. And uh, she worked at this nightclub in like the early 1880s. Um, and so what's interesting actually is uh, the dish of oranges that you see in the foreground in the bottom right, that's actually uh, meant to identify the barmaid as a prostitute. Um, so even though she may not be, she may not appear as such um, initially when you see this painting, um, that is what the indication is. Um, some other important details in this painting are uh, a pair of green feet in the upper left-hand corner. If you can, if you see uh, right there, um, 
Peregrine feet, and they actually belong to a trapeze artist um, who is performing above the restaurant restaurant's patrons, and that's a pretty important clue because you know you really don't initially see that or pay attention to that. Uh, so that's a pretty big clue for both Manet and this painting. This painting won't be tossed up nearly as much, but um, a lot oftentimes in Manet toss ups, it'll talk about this painting in the first few lines, um, and that might be a clue. Like in this painting, a pair of green feet appears in the top left, uh, which belong to a trapeze artist, for example. Um, some other things that are important is that there's some beer bottles um, at the bottom left of the painting, and uh, that's actually a brand called Bass Pale Ale or Bass Beer. And what's interesting about this beer is that um, it's like it was the first uh, like commercially sourced product to be shown in like a painting, um, which is interesting. Um, there's also a bottle of absinthe in the bottom right. All right, let's move on to Edgar Degas. All right, so Edgar Degas was another French artist and he was also considered like a co-founder of Impressionism, although he wasn't nearly as known for it. Uh, he's not nearly known as, the, as given the founding role um, as Monet is, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, but um, in his paintings, he's known for depicting dancers, which is uh, sort of like a main thing about Degas, his depiction of dancers, as well as racehorses and female nudes. Um, so his, uh, one of his major paintings is the dance class, and it's first of his uh, ballet pictures, and it depicts a dancing class at the Paris Opera. Um, and the dancer in the center is uh, Josephine Goslin, or Josephine Goslin, and here's a picture of that. You might have seen this before in classrooms or something like that. Um, then there's another, uh, it's not, this is not a painting, this is actually a sculpture, but um, it's called The Little, Little Dancer of 14 Years, and uh, this was made um, of a young student of the Paris Opera Ballet Dance School, and that was a Belgian girl named Marie van Gotham. And uh, this, in this picture, in this sculpture, uh, the figure is dressed in a real bodice, tutu, ballet slippers, and they actually have a wig of real hair, which is kind of interesting. Um, and uh, this sculpture was actually reproduced. There were 28 bronze copies made of the sculpture um, after Degas died. All right, and here's a picture of that. Right. And lastly, I want to talk about Labsinth, which is another pretty famous work by Degas. So it's also known as the Absinthe Drinker. Its original title is actually uh, Dans un Café, which means in a French cafe. Um, and the work basically shows two figures, a woman and a man, um, who are sitting in the center. And the man is looking to the right, and the woman is dressed a bit more formally, and uh, she's wearing a hat. She's basically staring downward. Um, and uh, a glass of the title, Greenish Liquid, Absinthe, is on the table in front of her. And the scene basically represents the increasing social isolation that occurred in Paris uh, during its rapid growth um, around the same time that the Impressionist movement was around. And um, important, another important thing is that the models used in this painting were Ellen Andre and uh, Marceline Desputin. So, and here is a picture of Lapsin. And lastly, here are some other works that you can take a look at by Edgar Degas. Uh, there's one called Before the Race. Uh, there's one called The Cotton Office in New Orleans. And lastly, there's one called Place de la Concorde. These are uh, a bit more advanced paintings and you may not see these in, until nationals or these would be like early clues for Degas. You probably not see these uh, paintings ever tossed up at the high school level. So yeah, that's it for um, Impressionism part one. I covered Monet, Manet, not to be confused. Monet and Manet are two different people. So make sure you're careful about your wording on that. Um, so yeah, I covered Monet, Manet, and Degas. Be sure to check out the next video on model organisms. Thanks for watching.